How do you get it? How do you get out? Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Now, you're looking at the title of this video and thinking, wait, Daisy and the Jones wasn't a series. It's a TV series, though. So, hello. Welcome. I will be talking about the audiobook of Daisy Jones and the Six and comparing it to the television series, which I finished five minutes ago. Hey! <laughs> it is very warm. So I have got my window open, there might be a bit of outdoor noise. There's just some sacrifices I can't take <laughs> when it is this warm. Let's get in with that blurb of the book and then I'll go into what I thought of the audio book, what I thought of the series, the changes and the similarities and the differences and everything all in between about Daisy Jones and the Six. And to be honest, having watched the series now, I feel very Daisy Jones with my fringe at the moment. <laughs> um, yeah. They were the new icons of rock and roll fated to burn bright and not fade away. But on the 12th of July 1979, it all came crashing down. There was Daisy, rock and roll force of nature, brilliant songwriter and unapologetic drug addict, the half-feral child who rose to superstardom. There was Camilla, the front woman's wife, too strong-willed to let the band implode, but all too aware of the electric connection between her husband and Daisy. There was Karen, an ice core keyboardist, a ferociously independent woman in a world that wasn't ready for her. And there were the men surrounding them, a feuding, egotistical Dunn brothers, the angry guitarist chafing on the sidelines, the drummer binge drinking on his boat, the bassist trying to start a family amid a hedonistic world tour. They were creative minds striking sparks from each other, ready to go up in flames. It's never just about the music. So, on audiobook, this is nine hours and three minutes. I did it over a few days on my walks at work. This was the audiobook for walking. Um, and it's in music, romance, and contemporary target audience adult. This audiobook was released June 2019. So, the voices on this. It was like listening to, like, a radio play, a podcast, because of all the people involved in bringing Daisy Jones and the Six to life in the audiobook. The readers of this book are January Lavoie, Oliver Wyman, Pablo Schreiber, Alex Reed, Jonathan Davis, Benjamin Bratt, Nancy Wu, Fred Berman, Ari Fliakos, Robert Petkoff, Arthur Bishop, Rendon Wayne, Robin Lee, Peter Larkin, Henry Laver, Holter Graham, Judy Greer, Julia Whelan, Jennifer Beals, PJ Auckland and Sarah Arrington. Yes, you've got a full cast for this audiobook. Normally you get one, maybe two people if you're getting like a his and hers version. This is done as if you are listening to an audio podcast where everybody has their own character. As listening to it, I believe Jennifer Beals was Daisy. I think that's the only one I can really guarantee that actually, that's who that was. Um, I've never been able to find online a breakdown of who was playing who. Benjamin Bratt, I think, was Graham. I don't even know where to start in comparing these, because in the book, obviously it all happens late 70s, and then in the book, it's like 50 years later. So you ha if you feel like you've got this older cast of characters looking back on their heyday in the 70s, whereas for the TV series, it's only 20 years later when they are looking back. So it took me a second to kind of get used to that, especially with the different voices. I'd gotten used to this really low, gravelly voice from Jennifer Beals as Daisy. And then, obviously, in the TV series, it's the very young and beautiful Riley Keough, who just doesn't quite have that same gravel as Jennifer Beals. Not to say that she isn't absolutely fantastic, because I really enjoyed the characterisation throughout the uh, TV series. And... I must admit though, when I found out that they were dropping a band member, it's just like, oh, is this going to really annoy me? And at first it kind of did, because obviously in the book there's actually six band members and that's how they become the six. Camilla, Billy's wife, is not considered a member of the band. She's not a photographer either in the book. She's just Billy's girlfriend, wife, mother of his children. And like the TV series, in the book everything comes back to Camilla. It's just like, how spoilery do I go with something like this when I'm talking about comparing a book and a TV series? Especially when there are differences, but ultimately the ending is very, very similar. I think in regards to the end, the only real change is that it ends with Camilla's letter, which is put on video in the TV series. And so you don't actually see the um, reunification at the end of Billy and Daisy. 
And also, in the book, her name is just Daisy, whereas in the TV series, she's given more of a backstory in, in regards to the abuse that she went through as a child and how she changes her name. Because I think in the TV series, it's Margaret, and then she changes her name to Daisy, whereas in the book, she's Daisy Jones throughout. And also, Daisy has her own life as a uh, singer before the six. Whereas the TV series puts Daisy first opening for the six and then becoming a member of the band. Whereas in the book, she has her own success just as Daisy Jones. And it's due to the success of one of her songs as a solo artist that um, the management go, oh, wouldn't it be great if you did a collaboration? We think Daisy's voice would really fit with the six's sound. And that so they collaborate on one song which is Honeycomb, and then after that, and realising the success of that, then she is eventually invited into the band. So there's a lot of changes that happen in regards to how the band becomes Daisy Jones and the Six, and also Camilla's role in the band. Because as I said, she's put in as a photographer in the TV series, taking pictures of their album covers and things, but it's like both... Daisy Jones and The Six separately have albums before they join forces, which the TV show has them only having one album, which is together. But yeah, they have one album as without Daisy Jones, and then they do the song with Daisy, Honeycomb. And based on the success of that, then they're just like, oh, wait, I think we need to join forces. There's something electric happening between Billy and Daisy's voices. And then it just all goes off from there. It's also one thing that I was really gutted that they did take away from the TV series is Karen Karen. <laughs> Karen, the uh, pianist, um, the keyboardist. When she's first introduced in the book, she's asked what her name is. She says Karen. And then she's asked, they, they ask her surname and she mishears them and thinks that they're asking for her name again. She's like, it's Karen. And so they go, oh, Karen, Karen. And then Karen, Karen just sticks. And I just thought that was a really funny introduction for Karen. Because it's Judy Greer that does the voice for Karen on the audio book. And after having that voice in my head for like a week, then it being coming a British voice, Suki Waterhouse, who plays Karen in the show, which I, I liked. I thought that that was a really good idea to show like how all these different people come together to become the six after they were with the Dunn brothers but I do find that the um, TV show makes the characters a lot more confrontational than they are in the book in the book because it is literally just told through the different point of views of the members of the band it means you can really delve into people's like personal stories going through it whereas obviously the TV series as well as getting the commentary coming through from the different characters, you are also seeing the actual visuals of them in the 70s as a band living through it. So it's obviously changing that format. Of the two, it's really hard to say like which I prefer. Ultimately, I do think I prefer the book. I think it would be a completely different experience actually just reading the book as opposed to listening to the audio book. So I feel like that's something I need to do at some point, just to consume the book in a different way. But yeah, so I think it would be interesting to now read the book as opposed to listening to the audiobook because the audiobook was done in such a clever way. I'm still processing it all because I'll admit at the very end of the book when you get Camilla's letter I cried. <laughs> I cried and I'm so glad they still use the words of the letter in Camilla's final video. I was really glad that they kept that because I was getting a little scared that they weren't going to because it's the end of the letter where Camilla says that Billy and uh, Daisy still owe her a song. Oh, that got to me. Especially because at that point you know what happens to Camilla. And so it, it broke my heart a little bit <laughs> hearing that. I think Taylor Jenkins Reid is a brilliant writer. I have not read a bad book by her yet. To be fair, I haven't read all of them, but of the ones that I have read, I've really, really enjoyed her writing. I was so happy in that first episode that uh, Taylor Jenkins Reid was a producer on the TV show, because it's just like, we are still getting her influence over the changes that were made for the TV series. So when I think of the changes that they made, especially in regards to Daisy, so I feel that, I feel like she comes across a bit more sympathetic in the book than the TV series. I think it's because the TV series plays it a lot more subtle, so more things are surprises, especially in regards to Daisy's marriage. Because there was a point when I was watching the TV series, it's just like, wait, 
I feel like they've changed way too much here. And then episode eight happened and it was like, oh, they're playing this for subtlety so that when the big thing happens, it is more of a shock to the system for the people who haven't read the book. Whereas for the people who have read the book, it feels like they're changing the story of that relationship only for it to come out in that one episode, like in one big explosion. Because when Daisy does get married in the book, straight away you're told that this was one of the worst decisions she ever made in her life. Whereas in the TV show, it's played for, my wedding day was the best day and I wouldn't change it for anything. In the book, it is made very, very clear that Nikki is not a good person. And so it is played continually through those chapters after she gets married just how bad of a person he actually is and with all the drugs and all the alcohol and how he seems to be driving Daisy into the ground and so yeah it's just there's so much to unpack admittedly when I did hear that they did get rid of a band member for the tv series it was just like is, is it going to be the same but I really like how they essentially bring Camilla into the band by making her a photographer because she is with Billy Billy is essentially the leader of this band because Billy prize himself as being one of the original members of like the Dunn Brothers which then becomes the Six. I think it, the TV shows plays the unlikability of Daisy and Billy a lot more even though the unlikability of Billy in the book is very very up there but I do think that Daisy comes across more sympathetically in the book than she does in the TV series even with the changes that they made to Daisy's character. There were points when I did not like Daisy in the show more than I didn't like her in the book but I think it's because in the book, she really doesn't have anybody. Whereas in the TV show, they change things to make it seem like she's got more of a support system, which somehow plays into the unlikability a bit more. And I, I, I'm still trying to understand why it did that for me. Having more people around her made her more unlikable. I think it's because she was letting more people down. Whereas in the book, it was just, it's just the band that she has. Like, it doesn't talk about a relationship with her mother, it doesn't go into that side of things, so it means that when things do go to shit, she has the support of the band when she needs it, but it means that when she rejects their support, she is lonelier than ever. Because her friend Simone in the TV series has a much smaller role in the book, so it does provide more of a narrative for Daisy, does Simone in the book, whereas... Obviously, in the TV series, Simone has her own storyline. I think getting rid of a member of the six allowed them to focus a bit more on Simone as well. I really enjoyed Simone's storyline. I thought that was a really nice way to kind of round out that character where you really don't get much in the book. This really is like a hodgepodge of <laughs> collections of thoughts from both of them. Ultimately, I really did enjoy the TV series. I really love listening to the songs. I feel like I need to go download the album because I know that they actually did release that album. I will say though, if you listen to the audiobook, at the very end there is the original track of Honeycomb without the words, so it's just the instrumental. The idea for the song before the TV series happened. Yeah, because on this version the cover shows that the, um, it says now an original series on Prime Video, which is where I watched it. Uh, I've just noticed you can see uh, Billy's reflection in her glasses. But yeah, just diving a little bit more into kind of the whole relationship aspect of it all. In the book, Billy never betrays Camilla. It's never implied that he betrays Camilla. He writes a whole album for her. All the songs that he writes are for Camilla and apologising for missing the birth of his daughter, Julia, uh, when he decided to go to rehab. And so after that, because obviously with the Dunn Brothers and stuff, you see him through the first album as the six, how he uh, gets into the drugs and everything and the alcohol and how that puts him down a very dark path. And then it's Teddy, the manager, that takes him to rehab because he takes Billy to the hospital where Camilla's giving birth and says, you know, you need to go up and see the birth of your child. Camilla is also there going, look, you need to get up here or you need to go to rehab. He runs away and he goes to rehab. But it means that once he's gone through that rehabilitation, throughout the rest of the book, he is committed to Camilla. He is aware of what's bubbling under the surface with Daisy. It starts off, it's like that enemies to lovers type situation. At first they hate each other, then they find that common ground, and then you start to see some sparks flying. 
but Billy never actually portrays Camilla in the book, whereas he does in the TV series. Um, I did see a little comment saying, you don't know if it happens in the book. And it's just like, well, it's never said that he portrays Camilla in the book. There is no implication of any kiss when it comes to recording the song and everything. So the moment that leads up to Daisy writing her angry song is a near moment where Daisy is just like, I've fallen up with Billy, but Billy is there going, but I love Camilla. That is what sends Daisy off into an angry toddler strop and writing that really angry song because she feels it. She's convinced that Billy feels it, but she knows that Billy's never going to betray Camilla. That's why she gets angry. Billy is just like, but I, uh, I won't betray Camilla. She is the love of my life. In the book, there's actually two more children. There's the twins. Justice with the twins. But yes, yeah, so after coming back and going through rehab, he fully commits. He writes all these songs about Camilla. And then when Daisy joins the band, he, she's just there going, I am not going to sing a whole album about your wife. I'm pretty sure that's a quote from the TV series as well. And that's what forces them to like, revamp and write brand new songs together. Because Daisy's just like, look, I don't mind having like one song to her, which is what Aurora is, the name of the the second album, Aurora. The song Aurora was written by Billy for Camilla, but Daisy's there going, I don't mind doing one song, but ultimately, we, I'm not singing a whole album about your wife. I have brought, been brought in because I'm a writer as well. That song that you listen on to the radio that's one of your favourite songs, that was stolen from me. I wrote that song. That whole backstory changes for the tv series and i think it is to like that groundwork for how they become the people that they become and looking at all the side stories in regards to like karen and stuff and with her pregnancy and then her decision to not continue with that and how graham gets really really angry with her for not going through with it and it's just like but that's not you know i'm that's not what I want. I want to be in this mad. I want to perform and a family does not fit into that right now. And so um, I feel like in the TV series, the storyline between those two, because you know about it for quite a long time in the book, whereas it kind of comes a little bit out of nowhere in the TV series when they're kind of ripping on Graham on the tour bus and implying that he might be gay. And then Karen's just there going, no, we've been sleeping together this whole time, you didn't even realise. Because in the book, because you are seeing from the individual points of view, it means you're having this, you're, you're seeing this almost conversation happening when uh, both Graham and Karen are remembering that relationship when the, the other band members weren't even aware it was happening. So, yeah, it's just, oh, there's just so much, there's so much layering, there's so much stuff that I haven't even talked about. So that's just, like, scratching the surface of some of the things that I thought about, like, the differences and similarities and things. Ultimately, I think that by getting rid of a band member, it did allow them to focus on other things, because the band member they got rid of wasn't actually that much of a major part of the book. I think it would be kind of fascinating to look into the making of it, the TV series, and the decisions that were made into what they were going to change. Yeah, I just find that whole making of idea fascinating, just to see, like, what was the thought process behind it? Some of it obviously made sense. Some of it, I'm just like, oh, it really would be nice to see that. The biggest one for me was Daisy's marriage, whereas, because in the TV show, as I said, she implies that it was one of her favourite days and she wouldn't change it for the world, whereas the second you meet Niccolo in the book because he's Italian, whereas in the TV show they make him Irish. As soon as you meet him, you have Daisy saying it was the worst decision she ever made. And then you're led on this whole thing of tracking that relationship and realising why it was such a bad decision for her and what Niccolo was actually doing during that relationship and how she was actually being isolated and... It ultimately comes back to where the decision was made to have separate tour buses because that's the point when Daisy and Billy are going through like one of the worst fights within the band. This has been so all over the place processing it all. I literally finished episode 10 like five minutes before I press record on this camera. But yeah, just to go through the cast list of the TV series... Uh, Daisy Jones is played by Riley Keough. Billy Dunn is played by Sam Claflin. Camilla Dunn is played by Camilla Marone. And uh, Karen Serco is Suki Waterhouse. Graham Dunn is played by Will Harrison. Eddie Roundtree is played by Josh Whitehouse. And uh, Warren Rojas is played by Sebastian Chacon. So that covers Daisy Jones and 
the six. I really, really enjoyed the audiobook. I thought it was a really good adaptation and even with the things that I kind of missed from the book. Ultimately, I thought it was interesting how they changed the ending. Mainly because when you find out who is actually interviewing the band 20 years later, or in the case of the book, 50 years later, the moment that you find out who the interviewer is, is actually, in the book, it's a conversation with the interviewer and Daisy. Whereas in the TV show, it changes to an uh, interview between the interviewer and Billy. That's another of those changes where I'm just like, I want, I wish I knew kind of the thought process behind changing that reveal. Because in the book, I thought it was really clever to have that moment between the narrator and Daisy. When the narrator goes, I remember that and how it steps out of the interview process and goes into a conversation with two people who do actually know each other. Editing Debbie just popping in to say that I do know that with the change that was made for the TV series that you do still have the narrator saying I remember that to somebody who they know. I just I really like the idea of that conversation between the narrator and Daisy because it just puts Daisy a bit more into that story also establishing a relationship between Daisy and Camilla that is what was missing from the tv series the friendship between Daisy and Camilla and I think that moment in the book was really special and it was taken away from the tv series by changing who that interview was with yeah I thought that reveal was very interesting and I also really liked the fact because having already listened to a different audiobook I recognised the voice straight away because the voice of the narrator is Julia Whelan who was the unnamed narrator of My Year of Rest and Relaxation by Otessa Moshveg so that was just a connection that was kind of unexpected. I knew that J Julia Whelan was a voice in Lady Jones and the Six because there's a full list on Borrow Box of the people that reads it, just not who they're playing. So from the by, beginning of the book, when you first heard the interviewer, the narrator talking, it was just like, we have an, another unknown narrator played by Julia Whelan. <laughs> So yeah, that was that, that was the connection I made in my head. But yeah, Daisy Jones and the Six, Taylor Jenkins Reid, also an Amazon Prime video original. Both so good, both so clever. I really do recommend both. And ultimately, the audiobook is fucking fantastic. I'm just gonna say that. It is such a good way to do it, having just a full cast for an audiobook. The closest I've gotten to something like that is having two people read a book. Like, I've just done one, which was The Road Trip by uh, Beth O'Leary. And that was a two-person his and hers. So that had the her chapters in one voice and the his chapters in another voice. So, yeah, just having just a full cast for this just worked so well. And uh, as I said before, it was almost like listening to a podcast. And as I was listening to it, I was going... Oh, I want to go listen to that song. Oh, I want to look up this band. And then you're just like, but it's complete fiction. But you don't feel like it is fiction as you're listening to it because it's just like, it feels so real. And I think that's partly because it's based on an observation of Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> Taylor Jenkins Reid has admitted that she was inspired by the story of Fleetwood Mac by, when writing Data Jones and the Six. And so the, the fact that it is inspired by a real band and the real events of what happened to Fleetwood Mac and the relationships in the band and everything, I think that's why it works so well and why it has that so much realism where you do want to go listen to the songs whereas in this case we can listen to the songs now because it's a tv series and they did make an album that they actually released like, i just loved it can you tell how much i love this <laughs> so yeah daisy jones and the six taylor jenkins read go listen to the audiobook go watch the tv series it's so great it is so great uh, yeah thank you for listening to this mess <laughs> of a video of me talking about the book and the TV series, the differences, the similarities and everything in between. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I do have another book that I have just read. That one was an actual readable book rather than an audio book, but that one also has a visual adaptation. So I might talk about that at some point as well. But yeah, so I am looking forward to doing another book too 
visual comparison at some point in the future. But yeah, so thank you. Don't forget to subscribe and I will see you next time with another video. Stay safe, everybody. Love you all. Goodbye.